Well, happy Friday. Today we're in Acts chapter 22, starting in verse 30, and we'll go to the beginning of chapter 23. Um, so Paul now, uh, he's, uh, well, he's been saved from, from being killed by the mob. And now he's had a chance to witness to the, to the soldiers who took him captive. And, and now he's got a chance to present his case once again, um, and, uh, and be, be before the Sanhedrin. So here we go. And so the next day, Verse 22, verse 30 in Acts. The next day, because he wanted to know for certain why he was accused by the Jews. This is the Roman centurion, because he's he's greatly confused. That's how we know Paul got to talk to him, because because what's Paul say? Jesus died, and he was the king of, and he knew, he knew he was the king of Jews. That's what Paul put in the cross and all that, and he knows the story. And Jesus was Jewish, and why are these people turning against this guy who's, you know, the whole story's got, you know, to an outsider, has got to be like, why are they turning on their own? And uh, so he released him from his bonds and commanded the chief priests and all of their council to appear and brought Paul down and set him before them. Then Paul, uh, looking earnestly at the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. And the high priest Ananias commanded those who stood by him to strike him on the mouth. And Paul said, God will strike you, you whitewashed wall. Um, now what's, what's a whitewashed wall? It's used many times in scripture. Uh, what that means is uh, on the outside, it's all nice and clean, but the inside, it's a mess. Okay, that, that's kind of what it is. It's kind of like a modern day version of it would be uh, people are coming to your house. You don't have time to clean. So you take everything, you throw into a closet and close the door. Okay, the mess is still there. You just hope no one opens that closet door. You also hope that corridor doesn't open on its own because you're just hurrying to just to put on a face uh, rather than actually do the cleaning, and so that's what he's that's what he's talking about here. Yeah, you 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 put on the face of representing the Jewish people. You put on the face of caring for their needs. You have put on the face of representing God, but you know, <laughs> inside uh, that ain't the case. Um, so it's very important that you know uh, to make sure of this. You know, but it, the inside is more important than the outside. You know, you know, God God can use anything. Okay, if our heart is pure. So. Uh, and for you sit, and continuing along, for you sit to judge me according to the law. And do you command me to be struck contrary to the law? And those who stood by said, do you revile God's high priest? And Paul said, I did not know, brethren, that he was the high priest. And I got to understand the high priest, they, they would change. Uh, and so uh, Paul hasn't been to Jerusalem for a few years. So, you know, it's reasonable to, to assume that Paul uh, did not know that this man had taken his turn as being the high priest. And so Paul says, for it is written, you shall not speak evil over rule of your people. So he's saying, I'm so, I didn't know you're a high priest. And that's a very important thing. We need to realize, you know, the rulers today in America, our politicians, Christians, should we ever speak evil of our rulers? No. Can't, now, doesn't mean we have to agree with what they have to say. There's a difference between disagreeing in a proper manner and disagreeing in a way that, that tears them down. Uh, remember, everybody is a sinner who needs Jesus. Okay. And uh, we, we should we should stay away from as Christians. You know, we can say, I don't like that policy. Nothing wrong with saying that. I disagree with that policy. Hey, this is what I think I would do. Oh, those things are all fine and on the table. And I talk, I say things like that all the time. What isn't fine is, well, that guy's a terrible person because of this. You know, we all were terrible one time. We were all sinners who needed God's grace to save us. Or oh, I'm going to run that person down. You know, the Bible says you have a problem with somebody, you're supposed to go right to that person. <clears throat> <clears throat> and what's the chance of you running into the president or the vice president or senator, you know, and, and if you don't, they got to say it to the face. You shouldn't have to say it on social media uh, to your neighbor. You know, Cause you know what? Hey, you know, they, they're, they, they have what's going on. You should pray for them. It says you should pray for our leaders and God, let them be a leader. They want to be a leader if God didn't uh, want them to be. Okay. There's a reason for everything. And we don't see the whole plan. And, and, and people say, I wish I could see the whole plan. You probably don't. That's probably a dream you don't want to see. We get to heaven, then you see the whole plan. But, you know, you know, probably here on earth, it's probably a bad idea. God's smart. He doesn't let us see everything. Because if we saw how everything worked together, uh, we'd probably not like a whole lot is going on. And we'd be like, God, I don't know how this is going to work out. But God already has a plan to make it all work out. Mm, so it's a great thing. But we need to make sure our leaders, that, that, that we don't speak evil of them. Uh, there's no reason to do that. Uh, and and what's what's it when you do that? All you do is you stir up the other side. Um, for example, watch. Uh, you know we're get, we're in election season. Uh, the last election season between uh, Trump and Joe Biden. If you watch any of the presidential debates, 
It was just them tearing down each other all the time. There wasn't a whole lot of material that actually got debated. It was a lot. And, and what happened? It turned into a joke. It turned into a farce. Um, because it doesn't get anything accomplished when you do that. All right. Um, uh, verse 6. But when Paul perceived that one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee. Which... He was. He still is. You don't lose that. A son of a Pharisee. Concerning the hope and the resurrection of the dead, I am being judged. And that's true. He's, he's talking about hope and, in fact, resurrection. But he's talking about Jesus. But he's not saying that here. God gives. Remember, when you're tested, God's going to give you the right words to say at the right time. And when he had said this, a dissension arose between the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And the assembly was divided. So what happened was all the heat got off of Paul and they started to fight with one another. For the Sadducees say, there is no resurrection, no angel or spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. Um, when I did children's church, we used to say uh, the Sadducees, I tell the kids, you know, explaining about the Sadducees, you say, they're so sad, you see, because they don't believe in angels, spirits, the resurrection. That's pretty sad. They're Jewish. They believe in God, but they don't believe any of this stuff. That's pretty what? Sad. <laughs> um, and so, so if you think about they're so sad, you see, kind of gives you an idea of their theological uh, mindset and then uh, uh, but the pharisees they confess both that there is the spirit and there is uh the resurrection and uh now way well, they believe it was a little was very different than what jesus taught because they denied jesus but right now they're talking about these things and they're like oh wait wait uh, and so now these two sides they kind of would be at odds all the time so paul well god Gave Paul the wisdom and say, hey, what, what's the, get the fire off of you and on to them. And then there arose a loud outcry. And the scribes of the Pharisees party arose and protested, saying, we find no evil in this man. Wow, what a juxtaposition there. What a 180. Well, we don't think he's evil anymore, anymore right? Uh, but the spirit or angel spoke to him, let us not fight against God. Uh, you know, and, and why are they doing that? Because they're, they're defending their theological base. It's no longer... Uh, an intellectual discussion now it's turned into an argument and the argument is taking all the pressure off Paul and everybody's looking at, at them uh, now there arose a great dissension the commander fearing lest Paul might be pulled to pieces by them commanded the soldiers to go down and take him by force from among them and bring him into the barracks you know God he, 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 he just he, he knows how to shake things up and he knows how to get his point across and he it's just amazing and all we gotta do is just trust God knows what he's doing and just go, okay, God, what do you want me to say right here? And see what happens. And it's amazing what God can do. Well, have a great weekend. Hope to see you on Sunday. Remember, Jesus loves you. I love you. And you are awesome.